To get us in the mindset of hope, I offer not a joke today, but a story. A school system had a program to help children keep up with their schoolwork during prolonged absences. And one day, a tutor who was part of the program received a call requesting that she work with a particular hospitalized child. The boy's teacher had asked that he be helped to understand nouns and adverbs. Well, the tutor went to see him that afternoon and was shocked to see how badly burned the boy had been and how much pain he was in. And clearly upset, she stammered, uh, I've been asked by your school to teach you about nouns and adverbs. And by the time she left, she felt totally out of place and very ineffective. The next day, this tutor received a call from the boy's nurse. What did you say to that boy, she asked. Assuming that she had somehow upset him, she began to apologize profusely, feeling that she was out of her element. But then the nurse interrupted and said, Oh, no, no, we've really been worried about him. But since yesterday, he's got a whole new attitude. He started to fight back. And it's as though now he's decided that he wants to live and he's really starting to respond to treatment. How did that happen? Later, the boy explained himself. He said that he'd given up all hope until the day the tutor arrived. And he said it this way. He said, I figured if people thought I were going to die, why would they send somebody in to teach me about nouns and adverbs? <laughs> that boy, that boy in the hospital had been given hope. A song in the night. And that was enough to see him through. That is the gift of hope. Let us pray. O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When Jesus taught about things spiritual, he often used common everyday objects or happenings to help explain them. He might say the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed or yeast or a pearl of great price or a wedding feast. And somehow, as I read about last week's victory, I have to say read, of the New England Patriots over the Denver Broncos, I couldn't help but hear Jesus saying, hope is like the Patriots game last Sunday. <laughs> down, down, but never, ever out. That's the caption of this article. If you stayed up to see the end of the game, would you raise your hands, please? Um, I knew this was a congregation of hope. <laughs> At any rate, I, I read Mike Lowe's column. It's entitled Patriots Beat. And after I read it, I said, that'll preach. Right there is a sermon on hope. Given that the Patriots had successfully come back from 24 points down, Lowe asked a good question. How? How did the Patriots end up winning 34 to 31? Where did they find the hope? Lowe's answer is simply and basic, simple and basically it can be expressed in one word that we need to listen to. The word is Belief, belief in each other, belief in themselves, belief in the system, and belief in their coach. Paraphrasing him, Lowe writes, you believe in winning because you won't accept any other outcome. As long as there's still time left on the clock, you just do your best. You have to believe that your teammates are going to do their best, their best work 
And your responsibility is to just do yours. No shouting, no finger pointing. No matter how hard the struggle, no matter how insurmountable the odds might seem, you just keep believing in the characters of those with whom you play and believe that together you are going to win the battle no matter what. That is the essence of hope. And bottom line, isn't that a description of hope in Jesus Christ? It's all about belief. First belief in each other, giving each other the benefit of the doubt, forgetting the slights while remembering the kindnesses, being willing to walk a mile in each other's moccasins. I know these are platitudes, but they're true ones. Believing that everyone made God sacred and everyone is worthy of God's love. That's what it is to believe in each other. And secondly, hope comes from believing in ourselves. I think this is probably the most difficult hope to achieve sometimes. Believing that God made each one of us with a purpose to live for something bigger than we are. Believing that we can be agents of good no matter how wrong things seem to be at the time. Believing that we are loved unconditionally and that we can share that love with each other. Then thirdly, Hope comes from belief in the system, in the teachings of the faith, that in giving we do receive, in pardoning we are pardoned, and in dying we will be born to eternal life. And fourthly, hope comes from belief in our coach, who is Jesus Christ, continually directing us, guiding us, continually redeeming us, and always ready to lift us up and empower us again. As long as there is still time left on our clocks, it's our job to just keep doing our best. As a church, we believe in each other. We believe that the people in this congregation are dedicated to working together for the common good and in serving, will hold to their own unwavering standard of personal excellence. I learned that the first week I came here. People hold fast to their own unwavering standard of personal excellence. And may it ever be. We can believe that in each other. Our responsibility is to do our own work faithfully as we support each other in prayer, give gifts to God that matter to us, and as we come here in this sacred space to worship. Lastly, we give of ourselves for the purpose for the reason of helping further the kingdom. No shouting, no finger pointing. And lastly, no matter how hard the struggles, how insurmountable the odds, we believe that together we are going to win the battles no matter what. I love the quotation from the movie, The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel that was preached in one of last summer's sermons. The quotation is as follows. Everything will be all right in the end. If it's not all right, then it's not the end. That is the essence of Christian hope. This morning we begin this year's season of Advent with two sacraments of our faith, the sacrament of baptism for Caleb and Alenia, and the sacrament of Holy Communion offered to us all. Both are means of grace, vehicles by which each one of us is offered the divine gift of hope. For hope to us is like a song in the night and like a symphony in the day. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.